No, that's very true. I mean, Shin really does have fast hands and good combinations, but it's about setting them up and not overcommitting too much. It can become a real waiting game if fighters are looking to looking to counter fight. These fighters seem very evenly matched. Obviously, with that rematch, they both know what the other one can do. Andrew just cocking that right arm, looking like he's loading up a little bit as he throws a nice left to throw to start things off. Gannon coming forward, trying to close the distance and get the takedown if he can. This is a real grind from this position. Big knee from the middle from Andrew. Bruce is going to want to pummel through. Maybe looks to negotiate down to the single. The takedown defense there from Andrew, getting the leg out there and pushing and creating the space. That's exactly what he wanted to do. Andrew showing some good lateral movement. There's a straight right, but a beautiful takedown from Gannon. Real power double, getting straight through the middle. What I like about that takedown was he didn't stop when he hit his man, he stopped when his man hit the floor, and that's what you see with the high level wrestlers. A runaway train takedown almost that just goes plowing through people. That's what you need to do. And here's some nice ground and pound coming in. Obviously a difference from the first encounter. Yeah, this is where um, Lewis is in a controlling comfort zone, I would say. Um, he has been doing martial arts a lot longer than Andrew Shim, so we're quite comfortable controlling the fight from the top here. It's interesting to see what Shim's ground game is, um, but we can definitely see the game plan of Lewis of trying to get um, Shim on the floor there so we can nullify using his fist. Shim's going to really want to maybe get back to guard if he can from this position. He's in half guard, a lot of sweeps in this position, but he is going to need to try and negotiate and get, a, get an underhook to see if he can roll his man through. It's tough to work when you've got a guy with a really tough kind of uh, tough posture as well, which it seems Gannon has very good base. So he's got his legs up there and no danger of kind of overcompensating. And moves to the side control position. That was very well done. Strikes to give his man something to think about and then negotiate his way through. Very vocal corner in there from Jimmy Waller. Andrew really needs to find a way out of here. In the side control position, he's really kind of limited, especially when we're up against the cage like that. And Lewis landing some strikes. He's got a lot to think about here. I mean, this is the game plan perfectly executed from Gannon. I still think he needs to try and get into full mount and then really rain down the ground and pound. But he's, he's doing enough to keep him busy, making um, Shim think. And definitely, he's got his man kind of pushed up. Again, the last time we saw these, we had um, two five-minute rounds. This has been 3-3, three, three, so we've got another round to go. A great finish to the round from Gannon. Obviously, he had the 10-second board go and just landed with a flurry of strikes. So many times we see that from fighters. As we see his corner from Gannon's mixed martial arts. Talking to Lewis there and just letting him know that he's done a good job in that round and what he needs to do going forward. If I was in this corner, I'd be saying more of the same. Wait for him to throw, shoot that double, and then just grind him out and beat him up. Jimmy Wallhead on the other hand, a lot more vocal with his, a lot more kind of aggressive almost with his, with his corner and letting him know that he's probably two rounds down and he needs to make something happen in this last round. Great for a young fighter like Jim to have an experienced cornerman like Jim Warlord. Obviously fought all, all over the world most recently in Bellator in their welterweight Grand Prix. So he's fought at the highest level and he'll know what his man's thinking. He'll know what he needs to do. And Shim with a real sense of urgency, wants to get this one started, wants to get in there and punish his man. I just feel Shim's got to start putting combinations together. Obviously avoiding the takedown, quick one-twos, put the pressure on him. Um Gunning. I think you're exactly right. That's, that's what he needs to make something happen. And if he is, like I said at the start, if he is going to throw kicks or knees, he can't just throw them singly because that's what his man will be looking for. He'll be looking to latch onto that leg or that knee to get that takedown. Sh Shim's got the tools with his fists. He just needs to execute them. Yeah, he needs to pull the trigger really in this third round. I mean, obviously he won't want to. He won't want to give it up and he won't want to lose. But to the same position unless he makes something happen. Especially with a shorter round, we're looking under the amateur rules. We've got three minute rounds. Hasn't got as much time to work. 
Yeah, torn a little bit, goes hands down by his sides. A bit of gamesmanship there. Maybe Godin there. Same to, to take him coming forward, but he did exactly what he wanted to do, Gannon there. As he shot through, got the takedown. You see Jim Warlad shouting to his man, but from Gannon's point of view, this is exactly what he would have wanted. Shem looking to use his legs to maybe kick off the cage, create a little bit of space if he can. Shem looks a bit lost, actually. I think he's trying to listen to Jimmy as well as trying to execute what Jimmy's trying to tell him, but Gannon's doing a really good job in, in nullifying everything that Shem tries to do to escape. I think you're right there. I mean, there's so many times we see like that dominant wrestlers are able to kind of nullify any kind of jiu-jitsu escapes or sweeps or ground attack just simply by ground and pound and great posture. And I mean, that's something we're seeing here. The, the posture of Gannon has been fantastic. And now he looks to move through the mount situation. If he can, he's got that one leg over. He's got the second one over. There's an arm bar there. Maybe if he can look, extend, but he's content with just landing strikes. Doesn't really he's got really one hook in. Maybe he needs to get that hook in on the right hand side. And now he's got the rear naked choke. This is bad times. Shim doing the right thing by fighting the hand and not panicking. Looks like those quick strikes by Lewis set up the attempt there for the rear naked choke. So many times we see that being the case. Didn't look actually that effective, but it, it obviously worked to distract uh, Shim there. We didn't have time for Andrew to slip in, but Shim's holding on. He's got that arm through now though. Jimmy Wall in the corner shouting to Andrew, do not rest. I suppose if he rests though, you see Lewis capitalise on that. Definitely. I mean, he needs the hand fight that he's having, two hands on one, and that's exactly, he's doing a very good job. And there we see the rear naked choke in there now. This one looks tight, but the right thing again strips the top hand down. Shim's really going to struggle here. Gannon going straight back to that rear naked choke again and again. Because we've got the 10 seconds left, it doesn't look like there's going to be a finish here. I'm really impressed actually with the um, submission resistance there with uh, Shim. Shim's obviously drilled that escape move numerous times, but Gannon in the end just had too much for him on the ground. I think that's the story of this fight. Shim never really had the chance to pull the trigger. He'll be disappointed that he didn't let those hands go more. But let's not take anything away from Lewis Gannon. Tremendous wrestling and really dominant posture.